This is a hated movie. From what I understand, it is widely hated because its characters and core plot are actually extremely thin. Plus, it's all based in somewhat pseudoscience, I guess? Apparently this is a deal breaker for many, but I treat it like, I'm not really sure what a good word is, perhaps a spectacle? It's conceptually very fascinating if you know what you're getting into. It's not a drug science gangster film like some people think when it begins. If you know that it's actually a universe origin story, you don't have to suspend your disbelief and stretch it like taffy. The ending doesn't reach nearly as much with this outlook. The beginning just doesn't indicate the intentions hard enough, hence the occasional plot issues. It's like War of the Worlds or even Interstellar in terms of the sci-fi quality of the event it ultimately tries to convey, but not so much in terms of the other plot elements, I guess. It's almost certainly the most vivid visual interpretation of the Big Bang I've ever seen in cinema, even if some find the supposed messages and artistic concepts to be pretentious. The last 10 minutes are flippin' insane, no matter how recycled it purports to be. This is the best done version of this since Space Odyssey, which I haven't actually seen, I'm literally assuming. But a few years ago, I made a very short video where I basically said, Lucy, in the movie, ended up accessing all dimensions. That's where she went. She dissolved into time, space, all their dimensions, and all the dimensions of other possible existential factors. But I have spent many a year looking at each part of the reverse Big Bang sequence, read all of the scripts, and I think I can break this whole thing down completely, in detail. Or, at least make an attempt. Hello, I'm The Theorizer, and this is going to be almost entirely rife with speculation and sci-fi mumbo-jumbo as I try to explain as concisely as I can what I think is happening in the final scene of Lucy. For those who don't know still, Lucy is about a girl who gets caught up in a horrible scheme where smugglers stuff a pack of drugs in her stomach so it can travel by plane inconspicuously. She gets beaten up, it leaks quite intensely, and being what it is in a large dose allows her to have more control of her brain, which, sort of like a computer creating a computer, creates a chain reaction that ends up allowing her to have complete control over her own body, then of the matter around her, and then of time itself, it would seem. In the end, she reaches a hypothetical 100% of total capacity and she instantly becomes everything ever after taking a mental trip back in time throughout Earth's history. As she gets more and more powerful, she manages to actually materialize herself a bit in these points before reaching a monkey. She touches it, and the implication is that she is the one who granted humans the ability to think rationally and have sapient minds. She then goes back further and witnesses the Earth's formation, its collision with that other planet that created the moon, etc. She zooms out again and sees essentially the formation of galaxies and then sees these little sort of gas or plasma jellyfish looking things that form nebulae which look like they aren't going in reverse but apparently they're all coming from this enormous source and what is this enormous source well Here's the interesting part I want to discuss. The hole is the Big Bang epicenter, and they go out and show what the hole rips through to. It seems to be the end of a long winding tube coiling in on itself from outside the multiverse. The music changes here, implying it's an important shot. Mass speculation incoming. This film works with the most interesting theories we have today. I do believe in some theories, the universe is sort of like a surface, if I recall it. It's sort of the surface of a four-dimensional oval sphere or saddle, in which case this long flowing tube is time, the black membrane it goes through is the present, and our universe in the present moment is what we're about to zoom in on as we see it accelerating back to a point. It's not the only one you see, though, and each one of these universe tubes matches the number of cells left in Lucy's body. She is cancelling out herself, becoming negative space. This inner black membrane ball is not one universe, but all of them. Hence this scene's importance. Another quick thing though, while I'm pretty sure it's possible she causes the Big Bang, I'm not sure that if all this time the Big Bang actually happened in reverse because she performed it that way. Yes, the Big Bang didn't happen, the Big Crunch happened when she went back in this very moment, which is why the trails on these jellyfish are behind them. Her trip back is what created nothing 
allowing the Big Bang to happen. Her cells merge at the same time that the Big Bang creates each universe tube, implying each cell she has is just another universe. When she reaches the final cell in her body, it chooses immortality, like Morgan Freeman states, and that cell becomes one with her mind, indicated by her eyes being the window to the soul and the only other thing we see up until the very end. When there's one universe left, one tube, one cell, one eye, it shrinks down in the shape of her eye, her cell, and essentially, the entire universe has become concept of her cell and her mind. Every other possible universe is every other cell or mind, which is implied when we play back the footage in reverse reverse and see that this first cell split is just the Big Bang occurring for two separate universes. This side of the tube is negative time, the other is forward time, this end of the tube is the parallel non-universe, this is our universe, and the others are the multiverse. Okay, now more onto the dimensional theory. We live in the third dimension, or rather we experience it, and live sort of confined to a coordinate in the fourth. Many will say that the fourth dimension is time, including, from what I've seen, this movie. Time is thought to be a separate type of dimension though as well. In terms of this though, we'll say fourth because again, Lucy likes to draw from interesting theories that are sort of ubiquitously known amongst sci-fi fanatics. There's sort of a pattern with point, line, plane, and then space or a point again in these dimensions. Like, the zeroth dimension is a coordinate, the first is a line, the second is, well, a two-dimensional shape, the third is an object, like a sphere or a cube, a little point. The fourth, then, is time in this situation, where the 3D object has a point here and here, and all the points in between. A timeline. The fifth is a parallel universe, which we see as, well, it's the 2D film between here and there, followed by this whole white space encompassing the multiverse, which is generally known as the sixth dimension. Again, in science fiction. Lucy is above this, implying she is viewing from the seventh dimension, but she doesn't control it, and from what I've seen, she hasn't actually witnessed multiple beginnings of time, just the one. Unless, of course, that very beginning Big Bang split is multiple different beginnings of time it could be, in which case there'd be many of these white spaces. But she has at least ascended a set of three dimensions in the end, and the next three, of course, would be where the other mystery would lie, I assume, if it were to even exist in this movie. In the end, I do think she created the universe, but to confirm the intentions of the director, time to read the script, written in... <laughs> Comic Sans, Luc Besson, you maniac. In the original script, everything is generally the same, except there is no verbal detail as to what exactly each thing is in the sequence. The removed shot, however, supports my theory that she created everything, in that she exists for a moment before the universe, and when the ventricle in her heart pulses, everything re-explodes and the universe plays it in fast forward. In this version, she puts her knowledge on YouTube, though. Same silly, unique, modern mental compartmentalization, though. The reason cells exist in this movie is because because the universe has a similar pattern of looping information passage because Lucy's cells went back and caused that to happen. Paradox. The director asks many questions in his script, which is officially revealing to us what he wants us to be asking. They're expectedly all quite metaphorical and wordy, which of course is why my theory has to be as well. He basically seems to be very intrigued with how stories and information exist independent of the size of what is conveying them. Lifetimes, universes, big bangs, all fit into cells, universes, irises, on and on. He seems fixated on the notion of how there are more cells in the human body than galaxies in the universe, and he built a film around that fixation, and how there is no size to scale, only time. That is the crux of the ending and all of the film's messages, but I do often get bored with metaphors because of their sheer openness to interpretation. And while I do like psychologically looking at the creators, I don't find it as fun. There's rarely a solution unless you script mine, and it's why I still haven't covered Twin Peaks unless I were to flat out discuss Mark Frost's version of the story for those who know what I'm talking about. We define our dimensions in some theories by sets of threes looping in points, lines, and planes, but those are just the patterns seen beneath the 3D we can view. So we know very little in terms of our own system in that regard. Luckily, this film is fiction created from those theories, so it's far easier to break down. Unless the whole thing was actually just a really, really intense drug trip she had while inside the jail cell. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.